Yeah. It's it's live streamed to our website. All right. Say hi. Say hi to your families. I just got to share this link real quick, and they all get to watch you. Let me just hit the. Uh, oh dear. The, is this live? Yeah, this is live. Why shouldn't that? Is it recorded? Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We're ready. We're posted. All right. Here we go. Okay. All right. You guys had quite the day today. We want to hear some highlights. We want to hear uh, some stories. We want to, we want you to share with the group, with those at home, what you experienced today, some highs and lows, what you took away from it. So who's first? I can start over here too. All right. Um, we didn't get to like have like big gospel conversations, but I think it was really cool how, despite our best efforts, we still talk to sisters. And like, I think we didn't get to talk so much, but Tim, your talking was really like, okay, this is how we would do it. We just, we know this stuff, and it was great to see it happen mm -hmm. in real life. And then Emily, somewhere over there, she was like, when we were waiting for everyone, she was like, let's go talk to that construction worker over there. And that was like really fun to like be spontaneous and it was really that's something I would not have done a couple years ago. Yeah. So I've grown a lot from that. Awesome. awesome. I love how you said uh, despite our best efforts because <laughs> my efforts I was trying not to talk with the sisters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like God wasn't gonna let that happen. Yeah. He's like, no, Fair. here they are, Tim. Fair. And, and uh, what, how long? I mean, did we talk? For an, an hour? hour. The, entire, hour. the majority. Yeah. Of I kept trying to go and I pick up my backpack, like, thanks for the talk. And they're like, well, we have one more question yeah. for you. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so. Yeah. so these are the sisters we were not supposed to. We were not okay. supposed to engage. The yeah, illegal had, sisters. We had okay. uh, specific <laughs> orders. But isn't it um, different if they're talking to you? Yeah, yeah they were asking the questions. Around. It was so a God thing. You can't. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, who's next? Kate. Kate Lee. Why don't you share about how we prayed for you to meet a young man, and he went the whole afternoon and had met a young man, and then? I mean, that was the summary of it. Um, <laughs> my group was Shakina and Henry. Um, we were also with Lynn, Jacob, and Hannah for a while. And we were basically going through the, I guess, the main building and kind of just seeking people out the best we could. Um, we later found out that the most people were actually just on the sidewalks. <laughs> but then we split off into the two groups. And before we did that though, I told Lynn I wanted to meet one of the young men, one of the missionaries, and I hadn't yet. So she said she would pray for it. And I said I would too. Um, we went the entire rest of the day without hardly seeing any. And Henry, where are you? We literally saw nobody. And all the ones we did see were going away, away from us, basically. So finally we decided to go back to the vans because it was getting later. And about the time we were all of all ready to kind of just sit down and wait for the rest of the groups to come in. Lo and behold, this guy with the white button-up tie, he's got headphones on, comes up. Um, he's walking down the sidewalk. So Lynn and I walk up, and the minute we walk up to him, he takes him off. No hesitation, he takes him off. And we ask him if he wants to uh, discuss some things, uh, we're trying to learn more about what he believes and we're trying to share what we believe, so um, we pulled him aside um, with the rest of the group and had a really great discussion, kind of a corporate feel to it, and uh, he was very open, he was very willing to share, he was way smarter than he gave himself credit for, Yeah. and he accepted our gifts, he accepted our prayers, he even took pictures with us. He's just a very gracious person. And I feel like he's very sincere in wanting to know the truth. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. When you say gifts, like, did you give him some 
of the tracks or right. um, we gave him a couple <laughs> tracks and I mean the email the, e the email as well so you know, challenge. he has some he has some resources for sure but it was really encouraging to meet somebody right at the end yeah. and then plus prayer answered <laughs> yeah exactly what you're praying for <laughs> yep that's about it Yeah, so today I got to talk to two different sets of LDS sisters. Um, you know, I really tried to make sure that with both of them I shared the gospel, like, pretty clearly, but especially the second set, I was with Zaya when we talked to them. Um, and they actually walked up and started talking to us and just asking, like, making small talk, really, but which was interesting because we chatted with them for a minute. And then I asked them who, like, who Jesus was to them, and rather than, like, answering it right away, they flipped the question on me immediately which is like exactly what I wanted. I would love to tell you who Jesus really is. So I got to you know, use a bunch of scriptures and talk about how Jesus you know, created the world, how he's co-equally, co-eternally God, how he's a Trinitarian, part of the Godhead. You know? So I got to discuss that real quick with them and then ask them you know, who Jesus was to them. And I think right from the get-go then, there was like that distinction of, okay, we're talking about different people here, whether or not they like it or not. And I think that was, that was really cool. And, that was a really beneficial conversation, just getting to share the true Jesus right away. I think it was really interesting. Um, so I was with Tim, and I was really just listening to him talking. And he started to talk, that he talked about the Trinity and the cosmological argument, and they were really interested. And he had mentioned sometime that he had a YouTube channel, and they were like, can you watch, like, do you have videos <laughs> about these things? And he was like, yeah. And one of the sisters, her brother was an atheist, and she was like, I gotta show my brother these. <laughs> and it was like, wow, that's so cool. Um, and then, I know, like, this wasn't there, but in the car, like, I was really emotional about, like, the whole entire day. And I was looking into the window, and, like, I just saw a reflection of my cross chain. And the, like, as a reflection, and I was like, wow. I just had to think God's in control of this. Yeah. It was uh, it was nice having you guys there. I could tell you guys were uh, fully engaged and praying, and uh, it was uh, it was really, wasn't it cool when they admitted that the Trinity finally made sense to them, mm -hmm. and then it, they realized it wasn't a contradiction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I was with the group was Terry, Cole, Eric, um, AJ, uh, Evie. Anyways, <laughs> 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 sorry if I forgot anyone. But um, the group of us and we just walking around kind of making a plan. We went to the um, history museum and just kind of looked around there. Um, Eric and Cole got into a conversation which they can share about um, in there. And then we um, left that and then went and just kind of walked around, went to Temple, at the main Temple Square, um, where we did our tour yesterday. Um, and we're walking, and these two sisters came up and they were like, hey guys, like, can we help you with anything? Or, um, you know, wanting to learn anything else, and so we got talking to them, and just kind of basic stuff, um, they're a lot less, more, like, less open to talk, they kind of gave us answers, but didn't really go deep into it, um, and we didn't really get into anything deep with them, but, yeah, got their phone numbers, um, just, they're like, call us up if you have any questions, and everything like that, so, um, got done talking to them. It was a pretty short conversation. Um, then went into the, um, where was it that we went? The assembly hall, yeah. I think, yeah. The assembly hall. Um, just to see how that was. <coughs> we didn't get to go in there um, yesterday. So we walk in and um, two sisters greet us right away. And um, they're like, just, hey, can we help you? You know, what brings you guys here? Where are you from? And so, all that, then we start walking and they tell us about the whatever miracle flower and stuff <laughs> like that. 
assembly hall and just how it was built and stuff like that. And so um, talking a lot um, just about pretty basic stuff and then ask them a few of our five questions, um, kind of surface level stuff and then you just kind of, um, they ask us questions and um, then we, or I would be like, anything else guys? And um, then we'd all kind of kind of stand there and then another question brought up. And so it just kept like getting, I kept getting ready to leave and then <laughs> get back into it. Um, so yeah, and Terry was over sitting so we could talk to him and soon enough you see him like scooching. <laughs> I tried to stay away. <laughs> I sat away from the group until, yeah. I couldn't anymore. <laughs> um, and so, a few of us started sitting down, like, even that just tells you how our conversation is, like, getting longer and longer, which was such a blessing. Um, yeah, ask those questions. Um, and then we, yeah, asked them who Jesus is to them and said kind of their routine, our Savior saved us from our sins and stuff like that. Um, and so then um, a lot of us just started kind of digging deeper and Terry got and did a lot of um, the gospel, which was great. Um, they, there's one question we asked, um, just kind of, yeah, just um, diving deeper what um, kind of all those, what was the word you used, um, the stuff they get about there. Mormonism. The big word? They don't like. No. Oh. Intention. Well, I guess we ask about like criticisms or things that yeah. they, they hear from they, people. Yeah. They said um, about the Book of Mormon, how people just say it's a um, bunch of um, kind of not like the Bible or it's just kind of almost fake. And they're just like when it's really like just an addition to the Bible and tells us more about this and so So, um, yeah, those questions like that and um, we just sat and listened and so then eventually we were all sitting down and just talking to each other and um, Terry got into, uh, well we started just hearing kind of what they believed and everything and then Terry got into what, more what we believe. That was contradictory to them. Evie got into some Book of Mormon um, passages and Bible passages. Um, so did Eric. And so that was really good. Um, so did that, and then you could tell they were just kind of getting like, kind of like not as joyful and being like open to talking. Um, they still talk to us, but you could just see their face once Terry started talking about what we believe that was contradictory to them, their smiles like disappeared like that. Um, and so, yeah, but just kept talking to them. Um, one of the sisters, <laughs> you could tell they were both just kind of like, kept looking at their watches and one was looking at her phone <laughs> and her really? books and stuff. Um, but yeah, so um, by the end we, got across what we believe in the gospel and I think we um Terry and everyone did pretty well just getting um the point across um and so then by the end they both got up and um checked their watches and said thanks for talking and just left mm -hmm. and they were just then you saw we were like, thank you, like, and they were gone. Did you go, cha-ching? <laughs> <laughs> we did do that. Um, Terry was, we were walking to the Beehive um, house or whatever, and he was trying to hand out the gospel million dollar cash, and whenever people would reject him, we'd go, cha-ching! <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever. Uh, that's your so, Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Um, other people in Maddie's group, like, I just want to hear, because that was, like, really our big, like, long extended talk with some Mormon missionaries. What stuck out to you guys? Like, what's kind of a, like, a thing that you're going to probably remember, remember for a while from that conversation? So, at the very end of the conversation, they were about to get up and leave, but then one of the sisters asked, how do you know the Bible mm. is true? Mm. 
And then we got to explain how we know from historical evidence and the 5,700 manuscripts and the Dead Sea Scrolls. And she didn't really disagree with us, which was very odd. Um, I would have expected her to be like, but what about this and this and this? But she like actually agreed with us on most of the points we presented. And um, at, like after that, um, I think Evie and Jarvis and Drax, um, and as you were kind of closing it out, she was just looking down at the tracks and she kept frowning. Um, and um, right after she like was finished reading the back of the track, um, Terry kind of got into like a pause in what he was saying, and she just said, "We have to leave," and then mm. they both left. Mm. So mm. it's very abrupt. Mm. Yeah, because if you read the tract right away, it was the Gospel for Mormons oh, one. Really? It all starts with a lie. Like it's like, oh, oh. hey. Yeah. It's a good one to hand at the end of a conversation. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, Evie, yeah. were you going to say something um, about it? It was just kind of a little frustrating how whenever you talk to the sisters, you're really just any Mormon. They'll always focus on the similarities. Mm -hmm. They'll always be like, we believe in the same Jesus. He died on the cross and he paid for our sins and we are forgiven in him. And I'm like, yes, but what else do you mean by Jesus? Like, tell me more than just, you know, what's on the surface, what you want us to think, like how we're so similar and we're not. It's just kind of a like, hmm. Mm. You know we're different, so just tell us our differences. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to tell them the differences yeah. yourself. We got to remind them. Yeah, it's like, yeah. so I believe this about Jesus, and they'll be like, mm, I don't really believe that about Jesus. And they'll be like, yeah. Aaron, you should be proud because you you equipped and trained us. And here's, here's what I mean. Because the girl, like Eric said, said, well... Because we kept going back to the Bible. The Bible, we trust the Bible. Jesus' words won't pass away, all that kind of stuff. She's like, well, how do you know you can trust the Bible? And we and got our hand you. out. <laughs> well, <Keep her> there's <laughs> fulfilled prophet. Like, we went through all here for the viewers at home. The fulfilled <laughs> prophecies. It's an index to history, right? Uh -uh, no, no, wait. Unity. Oh, ring unity. It's united. 40 <laughs> authors, 1,500 years. Uh, questions. Now the middle is the, the big the questions of life. Oh, yeah. The index of history changes lives, and it's a fighter. And like I went through that, and they like had nothing to say. Um, they're like, "Wow, nobody has an answer for that." But um, any the thing that stuck out to me in that in that conversation was they really had a hard time with the idea of um, being saved as a gift. Oh yeah. They were like, "Well, come on, like if if somebody gives you something, you're not just gonna let them give it to you. You got to earn it. You got to work for it." And well, then you, I, heard, you heard that one guy that on the video, right? Yeah. He said, well, you had to be born, so you did something. Like, that being born isn't doing something. Yeah, you, you contributed a lot in that, right? Yeah. <laughs> and the Mormons we were talking to, they compared it to, like, uh, your mother giving you a birthday present and how you can't really yeah. uh, repay her by just obeying her. Really. Well, it's an insult so to try to pay for a present. Yeah. Yes. Like Ray Comfort says, you know, if someone gives you a brand new car and you toss them a, a, a dime and say thanks, it's just insulting. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, God looks at you, oh, you're going to take my sacrifice on the cross, taking all the wrath that you rightly deserve, and you're going to try to pay me back with mm. a smile. Wow. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. And then when they see that, I think that's when they break. So. We'll go to Haley and then Jackson. Okay. Um, I just thought it was really interesting. Uh, right when we walked up, uh, Noah, Lindsay, and I to two um, LDS sisters, she immediately goes, if you're going to be interested in our religion and be respectful, <laughs> then we'll listen to you. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, she was how she she started. yeah, that she was, was a, how they The started. first sentence. Wait, she that said, was a sister? Yeah. yeah she said, if you're not going to respect us, we don't want to listen. Oh. She, was a, she was a bit more critical. <laughs> and I was like, uh, we will respect you. And it was like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel straight up contention though. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't expect that. So no. and then the whole conversation was just I don't know, it was really weird. I don't really know that's for older Mormons to know or that's for something to learn in like a few years or something. That's deep doctrine. Or, yeah, yeah. This is, or it's, it's my personal opinion, so I, I shouldn't really it's talk about it doctrine. since it might uh not be the church's opinion. Yes. We were like, what are your spiritual beliefs? And she goes, 
that's kind of personal, and I don't want to talk about that. Bro. Yeah, she she oh, kept oh, deflecting the like the personal all the time. Where was this at? It was right at, on the sidewalk, right outside of the convention. Yeah. Where, where the, wow. there's the general commission there twice a year. Yeah, yeah, and I was shocked. It caught me off guard. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, like the sisters that we were talking to. Uh, when we got done talking over that hour, thanked us for being uh, so kind and, and polite during the, I guess, arguments. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And they, they said, what, what did well, they say? They had mentioned a story about a really rude guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And oh. like, I was like, hope that wasn't us. Like, I mean, I know it wasn't <laughs> us, but they just said it. And I was like, oh, believe you we were nice. Yeah. But. They seemed to think we were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think it just happened recently, and she said, the guy walked in and just ultimately just was looking for a fight and took out his backpack and took out his Bible and was waving it at him and yelling at him and like, well, you know, they're not going to listen to somebody. They're not, even if he's got the truth, they're not going to listen. Right. You so you got to speak the truth in love. Over the head with the truth in yeah. yeah, that's right. So you guys are doing a great job. I mean, everybody here that I've watched share the gospel and and argue <laughs> with those who disagree. You've all been loving and respectful uh, the whole week. And I think because of that, you've earned the right for them to listen to you and to consider like, the gospel, the true gospel. Mm -hmm. so, good job. I think Jackson had something. Yeah, so uh, it was the second people that we were talking to. It was a couple of sisters. Um, they, they were very contentious towards us. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we started off with the five survey questions. Um, and then when we, had, when we said that we discovered, like, while uh, studying the Book of Mormon, there were some, uh, like, contradictions to the Bible in it. They asked us if we had read the Book of Mormon uh, cover to cover. And they just kept asking us that repeatedly. And, like... Well, if you read the Book of Mormon, you'll understand and it'll help, help clarify. Uh, but then when we finally, Kaylin finally found uh, something in Second Nephi to show them. They just looked at it. I don't think they even read it, and they just asked us if we had read the whole Book of Mormon again. So that was kind of not the greatest experience. But that's not that's not the good part here. <laughs> <laughs> so we went into like a garden and kind of talked about it. There are a lot of flowers, so I started sneezing, so we had to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw I was just walking down the sidewalk sneezing. That's how I scare away people. <laughs> we, kept, we kept getting uh, like denied. People didn't want to talk to us. Uh, there, were, there was one lady. I, I got to just get through the five story questions, but I couldn't like, expand because she had to go in opposite direction. So we kept walking, and finally there was this family that we went up to. And they were willing to talk. And the first question I asked, do you have any spiritual beliefs? And the first thing he said is he went right to how they believe in an inerrant gospel. And so as we kept going, they were Christians. And it was very refreshing, I think, because we were kind of down in the dumps from the talk with the sisters. So that I think that really helped to refresh us and like give us a new hope, I guess. And yeah. All right, Jada. So I was with Abigail and Brandon, and we went to the um, Church History Museum, and we were just walking around looking at the art, and I heard Abigail start to engage in a conversation, and I was kind of off in the distance, so I just started praying that it would be a good conversation, and I was kind of like trying to listen, but with natural on my own, <laughs> and then she eventually called me over, and we kind of were talking to this lady, and she was actually a worker at the museum, so that was cool to just get to talk to her and talk to her about the art. And we got to, like right away, we just started talking about her faith in the LDS religion, and um, you can go off of it too. But she, like, was so open to talking to us. She like was working, so she had to like cycle through spots in the museum. But she's like, okay, come on, girls, let's go. For now. <laughs> really? So yeah. It was really cool, and we went through, like, everything. We talked about Joseph Smith, her own testimony, the prophets, feelings, afterlife, like, wow. polygamy, everything, and it was so cool. We talked to her for probably two hours or so. Oh, man. And what really stuck out to me is towards the end of her conversation, we talked about, like, if the LDS religion was wrong, 
would she still follow it? Like, would it still be worth following? Mm. And she said, like, I think so. Like, that's what she was getting at. She said, like, wow. I can't imagine a prophet. I guess we also went into, like, prophecy. And if a prophet um, wanted to change something big in the church, and she's like, yeah, well, I can't ever imagine him changing it to anything bad, so of course I'd still follow it. And I pointed out, like, John, I think 1717 it was, about how eternity is at stake and stuff, and she, at stake, and she still just said, I still want to follow it. Like, she doesn't mm. think there's any other truth, so. Uh -huh. uh, compare and contrast that response to John's response to the same question yesterday. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting how there's such drastically different responses mm -hmm. to that. And I think Abigail wants to add a little. So we gave her um, a scenario. We said, let's pretend Jesus showed up and he was like, okay, I get it. You love me, but you've got me wrong. I'm the second person of the Trinity. Would you change your mind and follow this Jesus? And she looked at us for a few minutes, and then she was like, you know, I think I would still follow the Mormon Jesus. Wow. Oh, this is crazy. And we talked about everything. and Like, she was super patient with us. We talked about how we aren't saved by works, just like Jada said. And um, towards the end, we did have to go because we talked so long. We only like 30 minutes left. So we were like, oh, we better go and go to the vans. But it was a great conversation, and I'm super thankful mm. for that. What I also really noticed is, like, first going into it, I was really nervous that we wouldn't be able to have our Bibles and look a Mormon out to use the scripture. But it all came to our mind. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you guys saw the scripture. Sure. And Brandon did, too. Yeah. He's pulling out Old Testament mm. stuff. So I was really That's encouraging. awesome. Yeah. Good job. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Ask Jacob to share about Sam. <laughs> um, Jacob, Jacob Lynn wants me to ask you. <laughs> I'm gonna come sit over here, right there. I need something. Um. Okay. Well, we talked to this man, uh, who just seemed really confused, I guess, about uh, just any sort of religion. He talked about how. Uh, he, I think he grew up, grew up Muslim, right? Or something like that? Or? Remember what he said first, though? He said, oh, you're not woman? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, we kind of, we, we went up to him, we talked to him, and then uh, we eventually told him that uh, we were evangelical Christians, and he's like, oh, you're not Mormon, and he got really relieved. <laughs> uh, and probably because that's what he was expecting, because we were at uh, Temple Square. Um, but... Yeah, it was just really <coughs> sad to see. He just didn't really know what to believe at all. He mentioned that we were, um, like, after we died, he believed that we would just go on the ground and be nothing like animals, um, just like before our lives. So he just really didn't know what to believe, but we were able to give him some gospel tracks. Um, and he said he only had, like, five minutes, but we ended up talking to him for about... I'd say 15 minutes, and so I, I think we put some... Remember he said he went to church for two years? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he said he uh, went to church for two years, and um, he just had... Oh, the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, he, we were able to put some rocks in his socks, and it was just kind of <laughs> motivating. Yeah. Nice. And he thanked us, too. He was very pleasant. He wasn't contentious at all. Um, I think he's almost relieved, and we did give, we give him, wow, Jacob tried to give him that email address. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Hannah got it right. Is he kind of a bigger guy? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I think so, it's kind of, yeah. Was he like doing construction around there? No, no, no. no. He, was, he was just break. sitting. Okay. Did he have a daughter? No. There was some guy that came up, he came up to me uh, as we were getting ready to leave in the bands. Did he have, yeah. like, the masks? Yeah, yeah. That's the one me, Emily, and Kate talked to. Him. Oh, really? He was yeah. just in nice clothes. He okay. Oh. I want to hear it. Oh, you already talked about that. Yeah. Today. Okay, because he, he came up and goes, are you guys the South Dakota group? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah. And he goes, thank you. You, you guys be Aww. safe. Yeah, he did say that. What's that? Yeah, he did say yeah. that. Yeah. I remember yeah. that he was British. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to share about the, our experience with the two sisters? <laughs> <laughs> So um, while um, Jacob, Cade, and Shakina um, were, and Henry were talking um, to Sam, two Mormon sisters came up um, and were like, hey, are you guys um, here, like, new here? Are you just visiting? So 
Um, me and Mama Lynn went up and just kind of talked with them for a little bit. We talked about, um, we kind of went into like the different kingdoms of where you're going to go after you die. Because we asked them, like, where do you think you're going to go after you die if you were to die today? And all, like all that stuff. And they were like, well, we, would, we have this um, belief that we would go into the spiritual world and <coughs> literally sit there and wait for judgment and wait till like what kingdom we will go into. And I was like, okay, um, the biggest thing that we talked about, we started, um, what did they say before? They constantly were saying that the Bible and the um, Book of Mormon corresponded. Mm -hmm. And the whole time I was like, mm, no. But they kept saying that, and we got into the Trinity, and I was trying to tell them how, um, how Christians and Mormons are different, um, and with all of our differences and our pretty much that we have we have a different God um, and I was like we believe in a Trinitarian God a um, that God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are um, one being in three persons and they were so confused they they looked at me like like every time I'd say something that they didn't agree on they like would look at each other and then <laughs> look back at me and I was like okay <laughs> and so they were like well, we believe in three separate gods. And I was like, yeah, I, I've studied a little bit about your guys' um, doctrine, and I've heard about that. And they're like, well, yeah, that's what it says in your Bible. And I was like, where does it say in the Bible that they are separate? Because I have read many verses in the Book of Mormon and in the Bible that say God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are one. And they're like, oh, well, that he's one in purpose. And I was like, okay, can you show me a scripture um, reference in the Book of Mormon that says they're one in purpose? And they were like, no. the girl got so, like she got, like, it got she said she, yeah, she got so heated. She was like, if you look and study through the Book of Mormon, you will find it. You just need to get a book and you can look through yourself. Read and I was yourself. like, yeah. Okay. You could have been like, so you don't know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she even had like tabs, like throughout her um, like book, and she was like, I'm not a scriptarian, which I, mm. whatever that means. I was like, oh. scriptarian. And so she was like, sorry, like you just need to look through it, and then you'll find it because it's everywhere in the performance. And I was like, okay. no, it's not. <laughs> but um. Then afterwards, like, because I could tell I was getting, like, pretty heated, so I was like, okay, um, well, I don't want to take too much up of your time. Can we just, like, pray over you guys? And they looked at each other again and were like, sure. <laughs> 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 uh, so we prayed over them, and then right after that, they were like, thank you for talking with us. We just want to remind you, don't be too contentious. And I was like, yeah. excuse me? <laughs> I was contentious? But, like, they were literally like, yeah, we don't want to be too contentious with anyone. Like, don't want to argue. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. It was great talking with you. And they just left. And I was wow. like, so mad. <laughs> at the same time, I felt, like, kind of discouraged because I was like, I was not contentious at all I, throughout the whole thing. I was like, she did a good job. I was like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just curious. Can you answer this question for me? But like, not. I was just so, I was just so <laughs> mad. But after a while, I was like, oh, remember, cha ching, like you're putting, mm. uh, you're putting that stone in your shoe. Um, and yeah, so it later encouraged me, but mm. it was an interesting conversation. Wow. Good job, <laughs> Jacob. Tell them about the two men on the park bench. Oh, uh, one, okay, and then we'll go to Shakina. Yep. Okay. I, I think you should tell them about Alicia. Okay. Um, so we <laughs> Sorry, Mom, <Lynn. laughs> Jacob, you're taking a lot of orders tonight. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, we talked to this lady, Alicia. So, actually, how we uh, got introduced to her was. Uh, we saw uh, these group of ladies, and they were asking us, uh, like, where's the museum or something like that, and we kind of, like, pointed them in the right direction, and uh, so then this lady, Alicia, ended up walking up to us, and she's like, because she heard we mentioned that we were from South Dakota to those, uh, mm -hmm. that group of ladies, and she was like, oh, you're from South Dakota? And we're like, yeah. <laughs> and uh, she's like, 
Oh yeah, I, uh, I I've I've talked to a couple of groups uh, from South Dakota. Are you guys like part of like one big youth group, right? And we said yes, and then we explained to her uh, what we're doing. Uh, that we're from church, and uh, we're here to talk to Mormons. Uh, and uh, basically, what ended up happening is we just talked to her for a long time, and we talked to her. One one big thing that I remember from this is we talked to her about Joseph Smith, and we brought up some of his false prophecies. Uh, like uh, civil war, um, and like that one guy that was supposed to go on a mission, and he ended up dying that like October. Um, and she just basically was like, "Okay, I don't really care. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's wrong. Like, you make mistakes, and it's like that's the base of your belief, mm -hmm. and it, it, you're pretty much admitting like he's a false prophet, and you just don't care. That just doesn't make sense to me at all. So we. We were able to give her some, like a gospel track, and she had to go to her flight. Uh, but overall, it was yeah, it was a <laughs> it was it was a decent conversation. I feel like it was more of just going in a circle over and over. But uh, yeah, we we also kind of talked about how um, like the difference between Mormons and Christians because she kept calling um, like herself a Christian, and I was like, can we just get one thing to you? Like, <laughs> like, Mormons and Christians are different, but she was like, oh, no, 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 no. Mormons are like our nickname. We're like, we go by Christians. And I was like, oh, wow. mm, what? Nickname. <laughs> what does that mean? I was like, okay. Um, but, yeah, I would agree with Jacob. It did, like, go in circles once the time. She was just, like, agreeing with everything we said, or she would, yeah, it was, it was kind of frustrating at times, but, um, no, it was it was so good to talk with her. She was really really nice and really open to everything that we had to say. She answered our questions, but it just felt like she to every question that she answered, it was well honestly I think like personally for me like it was just all about what she thought. It mm -hmm. wasn't about like the actual like doctrine sometimes, and that was what really got me a lot. So, Terry, I asked her if she felt the Book of Mormon came through, it was God-inspired. She said yes. And I said, well then, can you explain to me why there's so many changes? Mm -hmm. And so she didn't admit to knowing there were any changes. And I said, well, our youth pastor happens to have the older um, book, and there's lots of changes in there. And she said, oh, like, it kind of took her back to think about it. I did ask her if how many generations of her family was Mormon, and all the way back to grandparents, she admitted. But she also said she did her mission work in Rapid City. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I told her, I said, if you ever come back, we gave her the um, email. I said, if you ever want to come back to Rapid City, would you let us know through that email? We'd be glad to meet up with you. I said, but also, if you read what we've given you today and have any questions, feel free to ask on the email, and they'll be glad to answer you back. She was very nice, very open, thanked us. Um, she was encouraged that we had the courage to share what we believed. Um, so I was, I, I was actually pretty enlightened by her. Mm. Mm. Very kind. She talked to a lot of groups. Yeah, she talked to her. So Shakina. Oh, I, I was told you have something to share. Yes. Okay, so I wanted to add on to Sam, but kind of running a little past that. But oh, that's all right. I wanted to say that, like, in between our conversation, he was talking about, like, this Bible story where he put... Jews in front of Gentiles, or like, I forgot what it was. It was really hard to understand mm. because he had like an accent. But he's like, I don't really, after that, reading that, I don't really believe in the Bible anymore, or like Christianity, because Jesus put his people over everyone else. And then we were really confused on like, what he was talking about. So he just talked about like the email and he'd ask questions and stuff. But at the end, he like after like he was like really grateful for talking to us. Then I wanted to say our second conversation was in the tabernacle, and there were these sisters who welcomed us in, and I was with Henry and Cade, and they just came up to us and started talking, and we were just like, yeah, we're on a trip with our youth group, and we came here to like get to know what you guys believe and like share our beliefs too. And so Cade like just started a conversation and like there's 
they were just letting us ask questions and then eventually Kate asked like to you who is Jesus mm. and this girl would not stop smiling and she was like well he's like our savior he like died on the cross for us and all this stuff and like, like what a typical one would say um and then we just kept talking and I noticed that if they did not know the answer to the question they would look to each other mm. and see if like they knew and then the other person would like start talking Oh. And then, so at the end, when Cade wanted to pray for them, he was like, so what should I call you, like, Mormons, is that okay? Or, like, LDS. And then the girl said, yeah, Mormons just our nickname. We're actually not Mormons. And then the girl's like, I would rather you call us Latter Day Saints or, like, hmm. I don't know. It was just interesting. So they're trying to distance themselves from the name Mormon, huh? I got another one. So we went, after we were like in the main conference center, we went to the church history library and a guy started showing us around all these old papers and stuff. And one of the things was like Joseph Smith's mom's kind of diary or the story about their family. And he had said, yeah, they, him and his brother were killed and martyred. And I was like, did you know, he, I really wanted to say, did you know he killed too? Like, I wanted to say that so bad, but he just kept on saying, like, they, yeah, they were just killed. This mob came. And I was like... Why did the mob come? <laughs> right? I was like, is that the whole story? Like, I don't know if that's all the truth, but he was like, I feel so... He looked so... Like, he felt for that. Like, that, that was really sad to him. And I'm like... Is it all the truth, though? Like, I wouldn't want to be believing something that's only halfway maybe true. I mean, yes, he was killed, but I don't think he was martyred. But he also killed, so, Mm. yeah. Yeah. It's just very interesting. Because they do have, you know, in that museum, right, the guns. Like, here's the gun Hiram had. Here's the gun Joseph Smith had. And so they're kind of proud of that. But, uh, Haley. And then we'll go to Kaylin. So, yeah, when we were touring the... Ava's watching this, by the way. She says... I love this. This is amazing. So keep it up. <laughs> well, that'll make her day. Yeah. All right. But yeah, so when we were touring the Beehive House, um, it was just very interesting how our guide, with like every question she asked, was very evasive or would get very like, uh, um, well, uh, kind of like that. And like from the get go, she didn't like us. Like she was just glaring at us the whole time. <laughs> and like, yeah, especially when Aaron would inquire, you know. No. And, oh, I know. <laughs> no. <laughs> but he just, she'd say, he was like, so how did Joseph Smith like make all this money? You know, or like, how did. Well, there were several houses. There was a yeah. For each of the wives. Oh. And I'm like, Dude, I have one wife, and I just bought a house, and it was next to Impossible. How did he afford, like, eight, ten houses? Yeah. Oh, well, he was the uh, tithe collector or something like that. I'm like, do you know what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he worked in the church. And then he goes, what church. does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, what did you mean? Oh, like the what custodian tithes? or what was it? <laughs> <laughs> so it was just so But they have a big thing about nobody being paid, remember? No, yeah. Like, God, what do they call it, Terry? Um, I don't paid remember. something or other, so they don't like people being paid for their work. Um, but that's how it all started. Yeah, yeah, that was odd. It was an odd thing, and she definitely didn't feel comfortable with that. <laughs> Although she was really comfortable with polygamy, though, wasn't she? Yes, yeah. she was like elated to <laughs> talk about yeah, polygamy. Yeah. And, and let me tell you about the sisters he married. Yes. And we're just like, <laughs> 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 okay, and like how uh, one yeah, of there was guests over it, that. He would uh, uh, Brigham Young would let uh, his wives like entertain. Entertain all the men in the home. <laughs> yeah, and then there was a number of bedrooms upstairs they wouldn't let us see. Yes, there was I'm like, a spiral you staircase. So it's oh, stop. She's never right? been up there. She said. <laughs> oh my word! It was, we missed that. Yeah, we, we didn't so get that one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and, she, and she also said that uh, in, 18, in the 1890s, polygamy was like officially stopped and that only a few branches that were excommunicated from the church stopped. But then she brought up uh, a different Joseph Smith, Joseph F. 
Smith and oh, yeah. said that she had, I mean, he had five-ish, six-ish flags. And I don't know when, he, I think he lived after... Nine, 1986? No, gosh, I can't remember. 1916? What, Becky? <laughs> he had 56 wives and 57 no, wives. Brigham 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 Brigham. Brigham. Okay, so when Joseph did Joseph F. Smith? He had, Let's I don't remember how many he had, but he's one who continued that polygamy. He had five or six, and it was after, after polygamy no, was stopped. What's so it was a bit contradictory. Yeah. Yeah, so it was just crazy. And, yeah, 57 kids. <laughs> No. You, you know, the funny thing is, I, I asked her, Terry. Yeah. So I asked her, I said, so is that, I said, so when they stopped that, is that when the, the Mormon cults started? But she was totally down with that. She was like, yeah. Because if it's a, if it's a derivative of Mormonism, but it's not the actual LDS church, it's a cult. And so I was like, oh, perfect, this will work later, and we never got a chance to. Oh. Because people call Mormonism a cult, mm -hmm. and it is. Not, not a psychological cult, but it is a, it is a theological cult. And so I was hoping to have a chance to explain that, but never came to fruition. Mm. But she, it made sense to her, because there is, how many more cults of Mormonism is there? Well, they said there's a hundred splinter groups. Wow. Over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what... Uh, Do they still have the same leaders then? The no. And so if LDS, they got different prophets. If LDS teachers have no problem saying people that deviate from their scriptures and their teachings to be a cult, why, why would they have a single problem with traditional Orthodox Christianity mm -hmm. saying because you deviate from the scriptures, you're a cult? Yeah, great. So that was the connection that I was eventually going to never make. I know Kaylin had something. <laughs> Traveling back down here. All right, Kaylin. <laughs> All right, guys. So it was me Becky, and Jackson. We were coming out of the Beehive House, and we saw this lady walking around and taking pictures of buildings and stuff. So Jackson introduced us and told her what we were doing, and she was... Austrian, so she couldn't understand a lot of what we were saying, so it was kind of hard to talk to her, but it was cool because we were able to give her some of the million dollar question mm. gospel tracks, and yeah, <laughs> it was just, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and I yeah. think she was like an atheist, because yeah. she uh -huh. kept saying that she didn't believe in God, Yeah. and it was, yeah, it was really hard to explain stuff to her, because she couldn't... Mm -hmm. Understand, but yeah. Awesome. Let's see here behind me, Maddie. I have a few quick things and I come up. Oh, you're fine. But when we were having our conversation with the sisters um, that we had the like our conversation with, um, one thing Terry asked was like, what are some things that, from a Mormon's perspective or LDS oh. perspective, um, what are some things that you don't really agree with um, from of our religion or whatever and they really didn't answer they were just like well i really like how you said like this about jesus because it was after terry kind of like shared what we believe the gospel is and everything just you know like with the similarities like they do um but yeah just like i like how you said this and i like this also not anything like well i don't really agree with this just kind of stuck borderline um, which was interesting to me. Um, second thing was the woman in the beehive was also very like snappy with us. <laughs> so we walk in. Was her name Joan? I don't know. <laughs> she was. She was. She wearing like white. Was she wearing white? She was tall and thin, blonde hair, yes, kind of shorter. Yes, I saw her. Oh, oh I, I saw your lady. Well, yeah. she was ours, and so we were in Joseph Smith's like office or whatever, and. Terry like answered, or she was like, do you guys know much about Joseph Smith and Brigham Young? And Terry's like, not as much about Brigham Young. And he's like, oh, but my job is like that. And she goes, no, we need to <laughs> laugh at us. And she's like, no, we have a limited time. Like, oh. I need you to answer. And we were, oh I was like, because okay. we told her we only had like 10 minutes. Yeah. So she was going to give us a rapid tour, a quick yeah. tour. We, were like, oh. <laughs> we don't know much. And so. That was the first thing, and then the wives thing, like, polygamy. 
we walk upstairs and we're like looking at the different rooms and like his first wife's room. She's like, and his 12 wives lived in the other house with all of their children. And I was like, why are you so enthusiastic about that? <laughs> yeah, so those are my <laughs> yeah. Something, something the lion house or whatever. Yes. Uh. Yeah. Well, something she else she said was that um, he, uh, she mentioned how the reason for polygamy was like God commanded mm-hmm. Joseph Smith and Brigham yeah. Young to do that. Mm-hmm. But she also said that Joseph Smith and Brigham Young were like reluctant to do that, yeah. which made zero yeah. sense yeah. because <laughs> he married like thirty four <laughs> people. So, <laughs> 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 It would have been like a hundred. Yeah. Otherwise. If, if you were reluctant to do uh, like more than one, why would you go all out and go to thirty-four? <laughs> I just made no sense. So that was very odd that she was saying that. Yeah. Well, and then so Eric, you and Cole, like, so as soon as we went to the, shortly after the Church History Museum, like, you guys talked for I don't know, fifteen, twenty minutes to someone. I mean, I don't know if you want to share about that one at all. So um, we. Uh, we, as soon as we got into the uh, church history museum, we saw like this like start your own journey thing. Um, so we went through that. There's a little video we, um, that we were supposed to watch. Is in, is in like this theater room, this like 3D theater um, of over Joseph Smith's first vision. Um, we watched that bit, came back out, and then we kind of fell behind, and me and Cole kind of fell behind, and the rest of the group kind of went forward. And then all of a sudden this worker lady like just approached us um, and she just kind of started asking like, where are you guys from and um, why are you here? And as soon as she asked, why are you here? We were like, oh shoot, <laughs> how do we do this without being weird? So we told her like, yeah, we're with um, a youth group up in South Dakota, um, kind of like interviewing uh, Mormons about what they believe. And that kind of sparked, um, well, I, I mean, it didn't really spark anything. It kind of is like an old engine. It kind of took a while to spark <laughs> up. <laughs> um, so, okay, one thing I did learn from that was that when you're on the spot and there's, like, you only have, like, one other person around, it all, like, every every question that we had talked about completely left my mind. Mm. The yeah. only questions I could remember were the five survey questions. Mm. But every single Bible reference I could remember perfectly. And I could even quote a lot of them. Um, so that was, that was really interesting and it made it really hard because as I said it took like three or four minutes before the conversation actually started to get anywhere but um, we talked um, a lot about the Trinity and um, what I used uh, Aaron's like um, you have a desk with zero persons and one being a person with one person and one being and God with three persons and one being. I used that um, kind of description with her, and I think that was actually one of the first times she actually understood mm. where Christians were coming from when they're talking about how God was one actual like entity. Um, and then another thing was in Isaiah, I mentioned the Isaiah verse, and she said, well, show me the context of this verse. And then I pulled out my Bible and showed her Isaiah 44, 6. And she just stood there, just kind of looked at it, and was like, oh, I don't know. And then moved on. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and then um, after that, we just kind of went back and forth about um, who Jesus is and stuff like that. So I think it was a pretty good conversation. I was, I was going back and checking in every so often, and yeah, I see Eric like, down like pulling books out of his bag i'm like oh man bible study in the middle of the church history museum yeah so that was awesome i thought jerry can i tell you one story and then becky you said who should aj AJ? okay aj get ready you're next uh yes lynn we were at the temple square and there were two men sitting on a park bench and i was with hannah and Jacob and I said, look, there's people sitting over there. So we went over there and I said to the one guy, I said, so are you from here? And he goes, no, I'm from Alabama. And I said, oh, we're not from here either. We're from South Dakota. And so then the other man didn't really say too much. And then I said to him, "Um, no, I think Jacob asked him actually, didn't you? If he, 
If he has any affiliation with anyone of your faith, he goes, yes, I go to a church, and it's called the Church of God in Christ. And I said, oh. I said, so then let me just ask you one question. I said, if you die today, right now, with no notice, do you know where you're going? He goes, yes, I do, and I'm going to heaven. And I said, well, that's the best answer yet. And I said, give me five. And he, so then the man next to him, they were together, and I don't remember where he was from, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't really talk to us at all. He didn't have any affiliation, and he didn't, he, he didn't know where he was going. Mm. So that was kind of sad to me. Here you have a friend who's a Christian with another friend, and he doesn't know where he's going. So that, that to me was sad. Yeah. But that was kind of a highlight for me because he was very sure of where he was going. Yeah. Thank you, Evie. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, AJ, what you got for us? Uh, it was basically what Eric said about, um, like, how at the Beehive house where she was, like, talking, like, how, like, it was a covenant from God about the family and, like, they didn't want to do it and basically that. <laughs> basically that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else stick out to you from any of the other talks that we had with Assembly Hall, um, how you asked them, like, what criticism they didn't like that Christians gave them, and then, um, I don't remember which sister, but she was like, um, when you say that we're not Christians, mm. because we are Christians, and Terry's head, like, whipped around, he, like, looked at them, and was like, is it okay for us to say that we're more? Uh, oh! <laughs> like, 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 Terry's like, asking, like, nice, like, questions every now and then, but this is when he, like, fully, like, got into, like, the conversation. Like, that's what I thought. I was like, really funny. And then they left. No, I don't know. We did give them, though, the, the well, yeah, the tracks, and uh, I, they gave us stickers, because we asked for them. And, and we did give them, okay, we gave them the challenge, read through the Gospels with that childlike faith, because Jesus wants you to have a childlike faith, read through the Gospels with fresh eyes, like, take that challenge. Like, we gave them that challenge. Now, whether or not they'll do it, I don't know. But but when after we talked to the two sisters, we were like, we just want to give you the challenge to read through the Book of John, you know, in 21 days. And she goes, well, will you read through the Book of Mormon? <laughs> 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 and we're like, we've actually been studying it. And she was like, yeah, you know, like, oh, that's awesome. And then they left. And yeah. Okay, Maddie's got something. Sorry. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. That's what this is for. That brought up um, some memory when we were in that assembly hall. Um, we asked them if they could read through John. And um, the sister that was talking to us kind of the most um, was like, yeah, we'd love to. And Terry explained like the whole like 21 day challenge or whatever. And she's like, but we'd love if you guys could do like a challenge for us too. Oh, yeah. like if you guys could like read through the Book of Mormon and pray about it and see if it's true. And Terry was like, okay. And then like, <laughs> just went on this whole thing like explaining kind of we don't like we don't do that and why we don't do it. And she was like, okay, so going back to my question, she's like, uh -huh. it was just interesting. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah, I told her, I said, well, do you know what it says in Acts 17? I said, we're more like Acts 17 believers. Yeah. And I'm like, are you familiar with that? She said, refresh me. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's when, that's when Paul and Silas come and they preach the gospel, the biblical gospel to the, uh, the to the Bereans. And the Bereans, you know, and I said, I said, and Paul and Silas didn't ask them to pray about it. Paul and Silas just shared the gospel. And the Bereans, they said, they, they studied the scripture daily to see if these things were true. And then they became believers. And I said, so that's what we do. We, and I went into the whole thing like, you know, we don't we don't wake up and pray like, Lord, who do you want me to murder today? Like we we know that we're not supposed to murder because he's already given that giving us that truth. So we take anything that we hear, compare it with the Old New Testament, and that's how we decipher if it's something that should be followed or not. So they weren't I guess they weren't I forgot about that. They were probably weren't very happy, were they? Really. It's kind of funny seeing everyone's reactions when you said do you ever murder someone today? AJ was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what are you laughing at, AJ? <laughs> yeah, she's right beside me, so I was laughing. I'm like, I'm like what, what's so funny, AJ? Like, oh, come she, on. She like, looked at me, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Was that you? Oh. Um, hey, April, anything stick out to you today? Or, or Emily? I don't, think, I don't think we've got to hear from you guys yet. Uh, 
I can go a little bit more with like the construction worker. But Oh yeah, so you tell me the story because all I know is I came over and I was told that Emily ran across the street to talk to a construction worker and I'm like, okay. <laughs> so you have to tell us that, that oh. story. Well, okay, so before actually I was talking to Aaron and I was like, I kinda wanna talk to a construction worker. Because <laughs> they're buff. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, <laughs> and so I was like, well, um, that actually did not happen at all. And so it was not till after, like, we got to the vans and stuff. I was like, I went up to Aaron again, and I was like, Aaron, I think I just saw another construction worker, and I was like, Aaron, I think I need to go and like give him a gospel track and everything. And he's like, I think you should go do it. And I was like, okay. And so like, I'm normally not the person who like <laughs> goes off and just runs after yeah, someone and I did not, <laughs> no, I did not like with the LDS sisters in Rapid City but like um that was like the second this is the second time this has happened and so it's like, becoming a new trend <laughs> I guess and so um I he's like you have to bring like a guy with you and so I brought Kate and then I also brought Ashley and we all went over and like walked up to him and he kind of like looked at me huh. uh huh. go the other way and I was like what but I just kept going and like I walked up to him and I was like Hi, hi, how are you doing today? Like, I was wondering if you would like a, a gospel track. We're actually from South Dakota, like all this stuff. And he like stood up and like, like kind of walked us out of the gate because we were walking into this gate area. But um, we all like stood there and just kind of talked about, um, like he was like saying something about how he's a Christian. And I was like, oh, okay, I was like, are, do you happen to be a part of like the LDS church? And he's like, yeah, I actually am. And I was like, oh, cool. And then I kind of was like, okay, so could I just ask you, like, if you have time to you who is like Jesus and all this stuff. And he just said, he's the son of God and kind of just left it at that. And I don't know, we kind of like got sidetracked he at one point. kind of funny. Yeah. So it was kind of hard to like, <laughs> did he ask me a question? Where did he do? Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of hard to understand. And so it kind of just like, we got really sidetracked and he asked me a really interesting question, but um, <laughs> I won't repeat that one. <laughs> and so then it was actually a really good conversation with him and I actually gave him, his friend was also sitting like in the, I don't know what that was. Um, and I was like, here, you can also give your friend a gospel track too. And he's like, oh, cool. And um, I can't really remember like if anything else happened there, but um, he's like, well, actually, I was just about to get off work, but these three crazy kids just came up to me, and I was like, oh. <laughs> And so then, when we were, like, getting back to the vans, I was like, oh, my gosh, he actually, like, I saw him walking towards us, and I was like, he actually kept the gospel track, so that was, like, mm. really encouraging. Nice. And I saw one in his hand, so I'm assuming he might have given it to the other, the other gospel track to the other guy, so I was like, awesome. he seemed really happy to, like, talk to us, too, mm -hmm. so that was really good. I think he was laughing in like emotional <coughs> need that day because he just like mm -hmm. sits at the corner kind of guarding the entrance to the construction zone and like he'll say hi to people but I think he needed like someone mm -hmm. to talk to him. <laughs> yep. Yeah. April or Cole, I'm just going to kind of go around. If you guys want to add anything to any of the things, you can or you don't have to. Can we just stare at her? Just just <laughs> well, I think today was a good test theory for what it would be like tomorrow. Like everyone got their feet wet mm -hmm. and were confident, and I thought the kids did. My kids did really well. I'm really happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was a great way to warm up because yeah, we went to talk to people who are kind of looking to talk anyway. Some not as cheerful as others, you know, as we discovered. But um, yeah. Cole, anything you wanted to add, or? Um, probably right in the middle of when, right when we had finally got our brains back. Yeah. <laughs> was, uh, a lady walked up, and she had been, oh, yeah. she had overheard, apparently, and she walked up, and she's like, I heard that you guys are from Rapid City, and I was like, and she was like, I am a missionary in Rapid City, and I was a little surprised that how random it is that you find somebody that was over, that overheard your conversation and walked up. And also, the lady we were talking to, when we most of the questions we asked, she didn't really fully respond. She kind of agreed and just said she only believed in like Mormon because she just felt like it. She didn't really say why. Hmm. 
Yeah. I thought that was really cool when you guys shared how, you know, you were talking mainly with the, the person, the, the worker there or the volunteer, and then, like, somebody else, they approached <coughs> you, right? They came up to you. No, both of them. Oh, they both approached you. But the one afterwards, too, had just, like, been hearing the conversation and then came up to you? Yeah, and and uh. that was the same person that I think uh, Lynn ran into. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing an hour later. Wow. Unless there's two people for Rapid City. <laughs> yeah, well, they travel in pairs. Who knows? No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, anybody else? Zaya, anything you want to add about any of the conversations today? Or? Um, well, like Moses said, we talked to a couple of LDS sisters and... They were like so happy, and after we were kind of done talking, he gave them the challenge to read John and also to read Galatians. Oh, nice. And they were like so excited. They were like, that is so great. That, we want to do that. That sounds awesome. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's, that's really <laughs> cool. I wish I'd, see, I wish I'd remembered, like with the ones we talked to in the assembly hall, like to give them the... I forgot about the, you know, the, the blog, the, uh, the gospel dot blog thing. Oh, I wish I'd, get, I'd love to hear from them in the future, but I'm like, ah, so now I want to go back to Temple Square tomorrow and hunt them down. Yeah. You need my email. Just no. Yeah. Yeah. Noah, Cade, anything you guys want to add to anything? Um, let's see. Uh, uh, okay. So it was kind of funny because me and Hallie, so like the two Mormon sisters that had like walked up to us, like they were like, Hey, like you guys are back. Like, what are you guys doing here? And we're like, So, do you mean like the sisters you met yesterday? Yeah. Okay. So, like, I didn't know it, so I'm like, I'm like over here getting into a deep conversation, and Hallie's like, Dude, like we, we met them yesterday. I'm like, Oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. We're already too late. <laughs> so I'm I, like, I'm trying to make small talk to kind of get out of it, and like they like start asking questions about like what we were asking questions about with the Q and A. And you like, did a great job, by the way, kid. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not trying to get too deep because they were fairly new, and one of them hadn't even been to like the place. And so, <coughs> I don't even remember, what was it called? This is the place, like the yeah, one this is the place. Oh, yeah, I see. Was, like two months. And so like, we had kind of got it over with, and we like walked back, and I'm like, I did not know that, I'm sorry. And so we like walked back to the seats, and we were starting to sit down and like drink some water. And we look up and we see Tim just like putting his backpack down, and we're like, "Oh no, what's about to happen?" <laughs> so we like walk over, and like at this point, there's like all four of us over there, and we, Moses is just still downstairs breaking breaking the law. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Not breaking the law. <laughs> breaking the law. I'm so confused. No, I'm just talking yeah, to LDS like sisters. Talking to oh, like the ones we met or something? Like, oh, okay. No, not even ones we met. And so we like walk over there and. He's like talking about the Trinity and it was kind of cool because he put it into like perspective to them and it was like I had never thought about it and he was like using like the Harry Potter method like no was, yeah. or no the, what was it I've never seen Harry Potter never okay <laughs> what was it like the three dogs yeah. uh, that's Cerberus yeah, or Cerberus from right. Greek mythology yeah I'm like I thought it was like Harry Potter or something and he was like talking about how like if you stab one in the heart and it dies like where does the soul go well, okay, I should probably yeah, tell the story at some point. Tim, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> probably a... What did you teach, Cade? <laughs> this is live stream, Tim. <laughs> hey, we just picked up another viewer because of this story. <laughs> I, gave a, I gave an illustration to help them understand an immaterial soul with three sets of uh, cognitive faculties or sets of consciousness. So I, first I, I talk to them about if they are a, a soul that can survive the death of their body and got them to agree to that. And I said, so, so when you survive the death of your body, you'll be looking down on your body and say, I am seeing my body. And so you're one immaterial soul with one set of consciousness. And I said, now, can you add two sets of consciousness to that, or three. And they're like, yeah, and, I, and then I said, now imagine the three-headed dog of uh, Greek mythology, and imagine Hercules uh, stabs him in the heart, and now that soul of that three-headed dog survives the death of his body. But there's three sets of uh, cognitive faculties in that uh, dog soul. And I said, no, I don't think dogs have souls, but just run with me here. And, uh, and I said, can you at least imagine this possibility? And, and they said, yes. And I said, so you've just conceived of an immaterial substance 
with three sets of cognitive faculties. And I said, if you can do that for a dog, you can do that with God. Mm. And, uh, and I mean, the, the, then she goes, wow. I mean, she yeah, understood she, it, right? Yeah. She, she said, I understand the Trinity, yeah. basically. So, so we, I, I was clear, we worship one what and three who's. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you got it pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goes, I don't care. <laughs> 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 it's like I talked anyway, and I'm That's like, awesome. good for you. But <laughs> it's too late. I couldn't do anything. Yeah, and you did great trying to get, trying to do stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. like well, we didn't really get in, in depth, yeah. like in gospel context. We just asked them about what, how long they're here for, yeah. what they're doing, and that stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Anybody else wanna? No, do you want to add something? You're walking closer to <laughs> me. I'm trying to. Get... <laughs> you were freaking the air. Well, okay, so. And then maybe oh, down here, Harry, if you guys. Harry, Harry. Oh, okay. Well, Noah and then Henry. Yeah. Um, so, I'm just going to give a more detailed uh, a story of, like, one of the last uh, conversations we had with Elder. Elder. <laughs> Elder <laughs> Case. What's his name? He was the super friendly guy. Well, for him, he was, like,. He was really, yeah, really smart, as Kate already said. But he was, he also was like, with a few of the questions we had, uh, he was like, uh, well, this is just my interpretation, not like the church's. So he kind of like was like, my idea, your idea, sort of thing. It's, it's, he it's said fine. He didn't believe the God thing, though. Yeah, that was Oh, yes, crazy. yes. He, he, for, it was a rare moment that a Mormon actually acknowledges the differences between Mormonism and Christianity. It was a, only a few, but he, he marked one of the main ones, which was Trini the Trinity. And mm. he said that they believed in just three separate gods, while we believed in one being three persons. Wow, he actually understood that, huh? Yes. Wow. wow. And then, is there a question? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Um, but he goes like, <coughs> yeah, like a huge thing people believe, like... Um, about Mormonism is like we will become gods and he's like I, I really don't believe that you know and it was like what you know like wow. what have you been taught that yes. kind of thing so yeah. that's really interesting so what are you doing here man yeah. <laughs> what's the point yeah. no, I'm kidding uh, all right and I was gonna go to Henry but down here did you guys want to add anything I guess I just found something interesting. So while we were on the tour, Haley asked how old, cause like we focus on one of Brigham Young's wives forever. He only had 56. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> only. And so I think this was wife number two. And Haley was like, how old was she when they got married? And the tour guy was like, Oh, we don't, I don't know, but we can look later because, like, we have a list of when all of his wives were married. And so after we were done with the tour, she was, like, super excited <laughs> to show us how old this, she was, she was 20. He was 41 at the time. Okay. And, yeah. And, and then, okay, so then I was just okay, looking so. on the list, I was like, oh, yeah, so how young were some of these people he married? There was one that was like 15 and one that was 16. And, and I was like, 50. in his 50s, right? Yeah. No, 44. I think. Yeah, he was like 44 when he married those two girls. And we were, and I was like, wow, this one was 15. That's really young. And she was like excited about it. And it was like, no. She, 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 gave, she gave the excuse that because women uh, didn't really couldn't really take care of themselves because they needed like a man or something to uh, help take care of them. Uh, since they didn't really have rice back then, uh, that Brigham Young would uh, like marry them to like uh, give them a home and all that. Quotation. How thoughtful. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mama Lynn's been taking care of 29 of us this week, so. Yeah. I have to tell you, for um, Elder Case, I said, well, we talked to you for a minute, and the kids were all sitting there, and then another group came, and I said, well, by the way, these are all my kids, at least for now, and he, he just kind of looked at me and looked at them, and he referenced that later, but 
They said, really, I just have taken them under me, and I've really enjoyed mm-hmm. myself. That's cool. Yeah. He was like, you have a beautiful family. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Henry. And then think of if you got any last thoughts. Otherwise, we'll probably wrap it up. And while we were in the... What? April? I got her topic to talk about. Okay, we'll, we'll switch over to April next. We, Good job, Emily. While we were in the, like, the old tabernacle thing. Oh, yeah. We were about to leave me, Cade, and Shakina, and these two sisters approached us and were like, hey, where are you guys from? We're like, oh, we're from South Dakota, and they're like, cool, that's where we go for vacations all the time. What? Like, South Dakota? Cool. <laughs> and they're like, where do you go? We're like, we're, we go to the Black Hills, and they're like, hey, that's where we're from. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Once we got into the conversation later on, the first question that we asked them was, to you who's Jesus? And the only thing they said was, he is my savior. Hmm. That's all they said. They didn't expound upon that. Hmm. Um, besides that, they were very open. They didn't want to talk to the Trinity about the Trinity at all. They, like, evaded that. We tried to explain it to them, but I don't think they really got it much. Hmm. Um, we asked a little bit about their scriptures. We were like, what is the Book of Mormon in comparison to the Bible? And they're like, oh, well, the Book of Mormon is an extension of the Bible. And one question that we asked was, why don't you carry the Bible around? And they're like, oh, mm. it's too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Then, um, another question we asked about that later was, um, why don't you use the, why do you use the Book of Mormon for witnessing and not the Bible? They're like, oh, we just like it a little better. It expounds a little more. And like, why don't you use the foundation of the Bible? And at the end of our conversation, Cade gave them the um, 21 day challenge mm. to read John. And they're like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna, this is gonna be fun, but we might not be able to do it because we have to do um, other reading assignments in the book of Mormon. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it is true. I think when they are on their mission, I mean, they gotta get up early and they do gotta read certain scriptures. Like, there's, they're, it's rigid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, April, what you got? Okay, so Aaron, Emily, and I. really interesting one of them was talking about how her parents had divorced because her dad had stopped believing in mormonism and he had like shown her like anti-mormonism stuff and stuff that he disagreed mm. with about joseph smith so we're like oh maybe she's like open to stuff or we we're like wondering what she thought about it then she's like but then i like got into the church and i found like where i really belong and i just knew that that was the right place Dang it. oh <laughs> man so, yeah, isn't that cool. something like yeah your husband starts sharing things that he's concerned about and for the, for her she's like okay well i guess you're out mm-hmm. it's not like to consider like maybe he's on to something i'm mean, this is your husband right like so much for till death do you part or i don't even trust you okay well also with, like the sisters we all got to share a testimony which was kind of oh nice ours was kind of short but it's okay but, yeah. mm. that's good yeah and, and that's a good reminder like you know we're so we're always kind of waiting for them to share their testimony but it's kind of like, yeah, if we share our testimony, that's well, they powerful. Asked us, mm-hmm. Oh, did they? they? They were like, so how about you guys? Want to mm-hmm. tell us about you or whatever? And like, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, we'll talk too. yeah so it was actually, it was cool. Nice. It was a long conversation though. It really was. And I think it went really, really well. We left them some websites to go to that they were really curious about some more information and stuff like that. So I've had a lot of Mormons say that, but they don't ever write them down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, we'll see. Hmm. Yeah. All right, Shakina. I just wanted to add on to Henry. So, yeah, we asked them, like, why do you prefer the Book of Mormon um, over the Bible? They were like, well, we feel like everyone already knows the Bible. And so, it's just, like, really cool to show them what else he did. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. Well, a lot of people actually yeah. don't really know what's all in the Bible. Right. And showing them what the, like, end of it is would be a little more confusing about the it is. So. Yeah. Allie. Another thing I was actually saying, I don't really know how they brought it up. They're like, you don't know pay to do this. Oh. And I was like, it's like, I don't know how often they said, we just volunteer to do this. And they were like, nobody gets paid to be a leader. No, like, they don't, apparently, and I don't know what this all entails, but... 
we, nobody gets paid for doing this. Yeah, like, they get support from all. And that's what they say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I was like, interesting, but I don't know why they said it. They were just like, we don't get paid for this. And I was like, oh, okay. You should have been like, well, we paid to go do this. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And we actually paid <laughs> to come talk to you. Oh, well, I tried. But I was... <laughs> Nice. All right. Well, I think I think I'm really sleepy, but I wanted to hear. I didn't get to hear from Becky or Brandon. Uh, anything else you guys wanted to throw out there? Oh, well, I was just, um, for me. I was really excited to have Jackson and Kaylin and be on their team. I think having two kiddos who really hadn't had an opportunity to get out and share. I know both of them were hungry, and then by the end, um, you know, we're going out in teams eventually too again. And so Not one of the things hungry. that they they were, were excited to maybe get. <laughs> To work together because like figuring out how to say what you want to say is one thing but figuring out how to partner with somebody else is mm. kind of um, a challenge and no, i think the experience today was pretty good for me um probably the beehive was one of the most interesting we got to talk to bill and he wasn't all excited about the polygamy but he <laughs> uh, he kept talking about the mormon gospel and so one of the things that i asked him i was like well, I know it's about, you know, it's about your religion, but is it okay if I ask you, you know, can you tell me what the, the gospel is? And he's like, well, I can't right now, but if I have time at the end, I will. And then he, he did give me the articles, I think something, the articles, 13 articles. Yeah. And um, which then we weren't sure if they were actually in Temple Square or not. And he said, no, they weren't. And so then that allowed Jackson to be able to give him a track. Um, <laughs> What'd you give him? I gave him the million dollar question one. I, I, I could have given him the normal one, but I just like I, I just grabbed one out of my pocket and it's like Yeah. Oh that's awesome. That's right, because I left one in their office. <laughs> <laughs> they put our bags back in the office while we were taking the tour. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> Put it on their desks and stuff. Well, Jackson and I, we loaded every stall before we left. <laughs> every single stall, we put one on the toilet paper thing. So, Brandon, is there anything you want to uh, add? Um, not a whole lot. Um, kind of, as uh, Jada and Abigail said, I was kind of with them. And at the beginning of the very, very long conversation that they had with one of the sisters, um, I just kind of let them do their own thing and wandered around. But after a while, I joined the conversation. And as they said, we pretty much touched on every topic that you can imagine that comes with talking with Mormons, but what really, really intrigued me is when we started talking about some of the differences in um, work salvation or really why we need salvation, when we started talking about the nature of God and how God is a just God, and because He's just, he has to judge sin accordingly, and each sin, no matter what degree it is, is equally abhorrent to God. And she just, oh, I, I just can't believe that. And I'm like, really, that's truly true. Like, whether it's a little white lie or murder, it's man that puts the degree of importance on these sins. And it just, she just could not believe that or grasp that and as we went through like how Christ atoned for our sin and there was that imputation that swap in God's eyes where he sees us and sees Christ's righteousness and sees Christ as paying for our sins that's when she really started crossing her arms and her face got really rigid and it, that was kind of the end of the conversation like <laughs> yeah. I am done. I don't agree with this. But, yeah, I really, really commend Jada and Abigail. They, I mean, they just had scripture and question after question. And I was very proud of mm. how equipped they were to just handle the Word of God. And like Jude said, be ready to have a defense for anything. So nice. I was very encouraged. Awesome. Yeah, I think you guys did an amazing job, and I'm excited about what's going to happen tomorrow. So, but for now, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, say goodbye to anybody watching this. There's two people. We love you all. I don't know. It doesn't say who, but. I bet they're people. All right. I'm going to end it. Whoops.
Let's see. Stop.